So, in the last class we have seen in detail about what is land use and what is why is land use planning very essential for our country. Now, one of the serious problems that we are confronting as far as the land resource is concerned is the land degradation. So, you should know what is the term land degradation mean. So, due to continuous cultivation for the past 4000 years or so and due to absence of proper land use conservation measures and management of land resources, land degradation has taken place on a large scale which has got a serious implication in our society and also on the environment. So, we need to see that how we are going to tackle the problem. So, let me first explain to you what is the term land degradation mean. Land degradation refers to the process by which we make the land unfit for uh, various purposes or for human use right. So, through our human activities we are making the land unfit for human use because of the over exploitation or because of the uh, irrational way or defective methods by which we are making the land unfit for human use. So, let us see what are the factors which contribute to this land degradation. Land degradation is caused due to natural and human factors. When you talk about the natural factors, one of the very important factor is the action of running water and the action of winds. So, wherever the rivers are flowing, we have a serious problem of soil erosion due to lack of maintenance uh, of the top soil, they get washed away which causes serious problems to our agricultural topic right. Natural factors are running water and the action of winds. Now, when you come to the human factors, they are various activities like deforestation, overgrazing, mining, over irrigation and industrial development, they have contributed in a big way to the land degradation. So, when you see the pie chart showing the wastelands in India in 2000, 56 percent of the uh, area is caused by the water eroded area that means the action of running water and then deforestation has contributed to 28 percent and then saline encrustation and alkaline land wind eroded area is accounting for 10 percent. So, that means there are some natural and man made factors which has contributed to the increase in the wasteland over the years by which we are making the land unfit for human use. So, now let us see how these human activities are responsible for land degradation. So, there are several examples which can be supported to tell you how this land degradation is a serious problem uh, which is increasing over a period of time ok. The first and the foremost is the mining. So, we are uh, taking out the minerals from the underground and we do not fill up the mines immediately after the mining has been undertaken. We are leaving it open which leads to the uh, deep scars and the overburdening right. Surface mining leads to land degradation. The reason is the mining sites are left open after the ex excavation work is complete leaving deep scars and traces of overburdening. That means, the loose soil that we have taken up from the underground is left without any support. So, that once the rain water uh, uh, rain falls all these gets eroded which causes serious problems of erosion. Especially this problem is on the increasing scale in the states of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha deforestation due to mining has resulted in the land degradation. So, to uh, mine the uh, minerals first thing the forests are cleared right and after that the mining work has been undertaken which has left the soil very loose and this has been washed away by the rain water or the running water 
which has caused the problem of land degradation in these states. So, with the increased mining activity, this has become a serious problem in the states of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, uh, where there are rich source of minerals. Now, another important human activity which has contributed to the land degradation is overgrazing. So, we overgraze already the grasslands are very less in India and we are overgrazing these lands which leaves the land open to the natural process of uh, erosion. Especially these problems are so serious in the states of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra overgrazing has been a major problem for land degradation because the animals are left in the grassland for long hours which has led to the overgrazing which has led to the land degradation in a big way. Now, the next one you have is the over irrigation that is excessive irrigation. You know in the states of Punjab and Haryana agriculture is very very important right and you also have plenty of rivers where the canals have been constructed to provide water to our agricultural lands. So, excessive irrigation in the states of Punjab, Haryana and western UP has resulted in lot of water logging resulting in salinity and alkalinity in the soil. You see how the, uh, the excessive irrigation can lead to the uh, excessive salt uh, accumulation and also the alkalinity of the soil right which is a serious problem of land degradation. Then another very, very important one is the mineral processing. This economic activity is going on in the industrial areas where there are a lot of dust uh, which is taking place while grinding the limestone for the cement industry and calcite and soapstone for ceramic industry. They release large quantities of fine dust into the atmosphere, right. This dust when it gets settled down on the top soil, it reduces the infiltration of water into the soil after it settles down on the land. So, that way they uh, block the minute pore spaces on this soil which leads to the reduction in the infiltration of water into the soil. So, naturally what happens even the underground water or the ground water becomes uh, sometimes uh, contaminated also and sometimes the uh, level of underground water decreases because they block these pore spaces which uh, cause, uh, reduces the infiltration of water into the soil, right. Another one uh, connected to the industrial development is the discharge of effluents. In recent years, the discharge of in industrial effluents and waste water has become a major source of land degradation. So, there are a lot of solid and liquid uh, which is been left out from the industries into the land which gets settles down and causes a serious problem of land degradation, right. So, uh, it causes even the water pollution as well as the land pollution as well as the soil pollution because uh, they get settled down on the top soil which causes innumerable problems as far as the land resource is concerned. So, that way land degradation has taken place because of the uh, improper discharge of the industrial effluents. They need to be treated before it is being left out, let out. So, they need to be treated so that the chemical um, wastage which is there which can be harmful to the land or the water can be reduced. Now, let us see what are the measures that we can use for controlling the land degradation. There are several measures that we can make use of it by which we can minimize the land degradation. I cannot say you can completely control the land degradation, but we can minimize and reduce the land degradation problem. First one is afforestation. So, you all know afforestation is growing of trees to reduce the soil erosion in the health slopes. So, wherever the land is left uh, without any vegetation, we can grow the trees such that the soil is been uh, having the 
uh, soil has been covered so that it is not directly exposed to the uh, rain or wind erosion. So, that way we have to promote more and more growing of trees on the wastelands and the hill slopes so that the soil uh, is held properly some with some support and we can minimize the soil erosion. Then second major method is the control of overgrazing by animals. I told you we should not lead animals for longer hours for grazing, we have to have a control. They have to be left in the grasslands for limited hours so that we can solve the problem of overgrazing by the animals. The third method is the plantation of shelter bells. So, what are shelter bells? They are the planting of trees um, and shrubs in uh, rows so that we can check the force of the winds and also the encroachment of the deserts. So, this is a method which we can be, uh, be more useful in deserts to stabilize the sand dunes. You can grow the uh, some short uh, uh, shrubs which can cover the sand dune so that we can stabilize the sand dunes and prevent the wind erosion in deserts. Same way you can uh, practice this in the coastal areas also where uh, you can prevent the wind ero uh, sorry wave erosion as well as in uh, along the river banks also you can have this to control the force of the river water right. So, that way shelter belts can be a uh, ideal method in the areas of deserts as well as in the arid and semi arid areas to stabilize the sand dunes. The next one is stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes in arid area. This is another method like if the sand dunes are left barren without any uh, vegetation, uh, whenever the wind blows very strongly the sand can be removed very easily. So, you have to cover these sand dunes by some short bushes or thorny um, vegetation so that we can prevent the wind erosion in deserts. Then the next one is proper management of the wasteland. So, wasteland can be put to better uses right, but maybe for non agricultural activities it can be used, but it should not be left as a wasteland. Uh, if it is so, then it will be exposed to the nature's process and it will cause large scale degradation of the land. So, you have to plan it out in such a way that wastelands can be um, uh, used for growing some thorny bushes or some kind of vegetation which can be useful to our uh, future. Like uh, uh, I am I'm just remembering about one uh, example here, like uh, there is a concept which came to India called as the energy plantation. There are certain bushes and uh, shrubs uh, which have got high calorific value and you can grow these uh, things uh, in these uh, wastelands by which you can uh, make better use of the wastelands and these can provide you energy and they can also develop uh, uh, employment opportunities in the rural areas right. And then the next one is the control of mining activities. So, mining has to be done in a controlled manner so that we can prevent the land degradation. I told you uh, after the mining has been uh, done, we have to uh, close these mines without leaving them open to the nature's process. If they are left open, definitely these loose soil which has been taken up uh, from the underground can lead to serious land degradation. The next one you have is the discharge of industrial effluents after treatment. So, whenever you talk about uh, discharge of the industrial uh, effluents, they need to be treated in a proper way. There are different stages primary, secondary and uh, tertiary treatments that can be adopted. So, that uh, we, we are sure that there are no chemicals left out in the rivers or it is been settling on the land. So, that way these methods can be followed in an effective way by which we can pro solve the problem of land degradation. Because in India uh, every year uh, more than uh, 300, um, one minute, let me just see.
you have a large area of land has been degraded every year because of these uh, natural and human made factors which is a serious problem which will affect our agriculture in a big way. So, if you allow such a land we will not be able to raise so much of crop to meet the growing needs of our population. Okay? Thank you very much.